Greetings, and welcome to my channel, Conversation from the Hot Box. Today, I want to bring you something that's going to be a, a little unique. It's actually the merging of our group from the Hot Box, so to speak, and another group that I have uh, that are referred to as Manhood 712. And a group of men a few weeks ago went to see the movie The Forge, and it impacted us so much that we decided to uh, create among ourselves a community of accountability, of strengthening and encouraging, and a place where we can share and develop and grow together as men as we wrestle with this concept of manhood particularly godly manhood and what it means to function as such, the character, the principles that are needed. And so because of that, we began meeting on Saturdays, uh, going over those things that require us, that help us, that mature us into manhood and particularly, again, godly manhood and the character that is needed for that. And so today I'll just be sharing uh, just a few minutes of, of some of that meeting uh, to highlight the fact that uh, there are young men that notice that they need uh, that encouragement, that uh, instruction, that correction, those examples, the sharing of testimony, the sharing of our successes as well as our failures. And so I just wanted to share some of that with you today and also to highlight and promote a powerful conference that's taking place in uh, Dallas, Texas this week, uh, referred to as a man thinketh. And so with all of these things going on, I don't think it's a coincidence that God is really presenting another clarion call to men to come together and, and uh, begin to function as we were meant to function in our original intent to function as far as our relationship with God, our relationship with each other, and our relationship with our families and our communities. And I'm so honored to be a part of this group and sharing with this group and, and learning with this group and their encouragement of me. So I hope you enjoy the clip. God bless you. Definition of a man. Mindset. Because whether you believe you can or you believe you can't, you're right. When I'm praising, I'm not just screaming. I'm fighting. I'm winning the war in the ground of my mind. What you're hiding is holding you back from your destiny. I want you to own it. I want you to own you. So I want to begin our session today with a question. Uh, when, when did the transition occur uh, that moved you from boyhood into manhood? I'm going to uh, share my PowerPoint screen while y'all ponder that for a second. And, and answering that question, because for some, it was, they, they felt when they got a car. Some was when they graduated high school or college, when they got a job, uh, when they lost their virginity, uh, uh, when they got married, <laughs> when they had a child, right? So so what, right. what, what point do you feel uh, moved you from boyhood into manhood? Is this question directed? Towards me? It's toward everybody, sir. Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Don't get nervous. <laughs> uh, well, I'm gonna be honest with you. Uh, you know, for me, straight up, y'all, it's just uh I've always been living with my mother or living with somebody, something. 
So even though I still live in an apartment today, I'm grateful because it's the key. You know, even though I'm renting, but still for me, was able to. And I don't get me wrong, y'all. I I miss a, I miss some rent, some rent days. I was late <laughs> and uh, had struggles, you know, paying my rent. But still, just to have a key to be able to come into a place, and you know, and I'm not with mom or some woman or or some program. So for me, that was it for me. Okay, moving out. Yep, moving out. <laughs> okay, gotcha. Yeah. Anybody else? For me, sir, this is Shadez. When I got out of prison in 2020, and how I was moving towards my own separate goals from my previous life of selling drawers and stuff, Mm. And me trying to attain a legacy for my children, understand that there was nobody really that was gonna come and save me. That were really just turned the whole, took the whole um thing to the next level, man. Cause I understood then that what I really want out of life is on the other side of the work that need to be done. Gotcha. Amen. Amen. Gotcha. Anybody else? Um, you, you know, uh, that's a question I've never really um pondered before. Mm -hmm. Um, so I was thinking as you as you were talking. Um, mm, I guess I guess f for me is um. <laughs> When when I my, my, the first time I went to college and um my dad dropped me off and left uh, I was a daddy's boy um you know me and my dad you know we were we were we were close up until he took his last breath in 2018 and um as a matter of fact when my parents divorced uh I, 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 when I was ten I was like Ma you are right but I'm still my daddy um so for I think for me. That moment came when dad dropped me off at college and then left. Because, mm. uh, man, I, I ain't gonna lie, I cried that whole afternoon because that was the first time that um, he had ever left me, you know. Mm. Um, and, wow. I, you know, I was, I was hit, I was, and, and I'm from, y'all know I'm from the Virgin Islands. So um, coming from the Virgin Islands and then going to Missouri, St. Louis, Missouri, and then being that bit by yourself, that after, uh, I actually cried myself to sleep. And when I woke up, when I woke up that I, uh, later that evening, I realized, listen, you know, dad's not here. You know what I'm saying? It's just you, you know? So I think for me, that was that moment when, you know, when dad dropped me off at college and, and you know, and went back home. For me, I realized, I, right, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, he's always a, a phone call away, but he's, he's no longer, you know, a drive away. So for me, that was it. Mm. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Anybody else? Uh, yeah. uh, I feel like I'm still transitioning into being a man, like being a full grown man. And mm -hmm. I feel like that because my dad didn't teach me how to be a man. So I had to learn from my peers. And I was jacked up. It was like a messed up understanding of being a man. And mm -hmm. now that I have my own place and I have my own responsibility, it's kind of teaching me like, well, it's teaching me since I lost my job, like to get out here and make it happen. And mm. to be a man and stand up and just do what I had to do. But it's still like, it's still a transition because I didn't have nobody to teach me how to do it. You know what I'm saying? So it's still hard. Like I'm still trying to figure it out. So I feel like right now is the, the time when I'm transitioning from a boy to a man. Amen. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, I am uh, 61 years old. What's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? So, me, me, you say that, y'all. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> sorry. Some, some audio issues. I'm sorry. I'm not going to repeat sorry, that. Yeah, right. Right. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I mentioned that to say I'm 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 with you, brother. Uh, I feel I'm still processing, 
And for the reason uh, being that, and I think this applies to most of them. I'm not trying to superimpose my situation on you guys, but I I didn't have it. Um, uh, that 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 father that was able to really explain and usher me into, or even express the principles of manhood. And I ask that question because it's that those answers are going to vary depending on who you ask. And it really brings us to the point of the confusion we have in terms of what is a man and what is manhood. Because if I feel like it's when I graduated from college and you feel like it's when you had a child and you feel like, you know, when you were separated from your dad or, or when I got a car or whatever, and all of those moments are going to differ for each individual. But the reality of it is uh, our personality, our, our, our uh, emotional and, and even psychological and intellectual makeup in reference to characteristics of manhood mm-hmm. were on different levels at that point. And if we honestly didn't have anybody to foster us into those principles, a manhood, mm-hmm. then we made up stuff. Mm-hmm. And so when you have to look back, as Robert said, you know, he was thrown off a little, right? Because that was a unique question. And so trying to look back, and we all do have done it. We try to look right. back and fish for a point where we could say, oh, I became a man here. Well, did you really? Yeah. yeah. You see what I'm saying? And so that that's why now, you know, often I say we, we're still at some point males groping in the dark, still trying to figure out what it is to be a man because there is no universal. Uh, hold on, let me let somebody in. Groping in the dark, trying to uh, be a man. Uh, welcome, stop. Uh, trying to be a man. Uh, it's it's. It's, it's hard, it's difficult. That's why society has been able to redefine manhood every generation or so. That's confusing. You know, at one well, today, men lack a community of males to initiate them into manhood and to recognize that their new status of being men. And that's part of the reason why we're here this morning and we're gathering in these mornings to, to help us uh, form and be that community for each other. Now, I'm actually, I'm, I'm sorry, you know, this question in my mind. Now, again, I'm, I'm, I'm directing this question to the young brothers. Question you have to ask yourself is because, kind of like Elder, he's kind of setting us up for some stuff. But you know, this here, this thing here that he's talking about. Uh, the question I'm asking the question to y'all younger brothers. Ask this question. What is your passion? What 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 pushes you? What drives you? Because see now I'm asking that question because see now once you know that, then you'll start making uh, moves in in the direction about being around first of all, being a, around the right people to help you get to to get to where you're going. So the question I'm I'm asking is that's something for you to think about because as these classes we take, see again, brothers or younger brothers, question you need to ask yourself. You know, one of the brothers you asked, you said, "I just got out of I, I got out of prison." Okay, so you out. So the question you need to do is, it ain't just about having a job, having a place to live, and having a car. It's about okay. You're still a young man. So the question you need to ask yourself again, what is my passion? So that means you need to take some time out with God and find that out. Because I don't care how much information you get or whatever that's poured into you from Elder Riddick or whoever, or either your pastor or whatever, you still gotta ask that question. What is your passion? Because if you don't, because if you don't know, you're gonna you're gonna keep going around, 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 around. And so you know you're gonna be like me. I woke up one day, I was 40. 
I was in my 20s, 30s, before I knew I was 40. And I woke up one day, I was like, damn. And so what I'm saying to you is, and so now, since 40, I'm 66 now. So I'm still on this journey, still trying to figure it out where I'm going, what, 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 what I'm going to do. And some days, brothers, it's fearful. I'm a, I'm a, I'm afraid. I'm scared. So I'm, I'm just, I'm just sharing that. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm, I know you're going somewhere else, but no, I'm no, just sharing no, that but... with you. So any closing thoughts, comments, questions? <clears throat> I want to hear from um, Shadan Jordan and uh, DJ Red Live. He be, uh, especially DJ Red Live. This, his, I think this is his first time being on, so I'd love to hear from the from the brother. All right, Jay. Since you, since you, you got the mic, go on and speak. Oh. Uh... I, I enjoyed it. I want I want to go long. I ain't gonna even lie. The, the <laughs> insights I be giving, I, I I love it. I ain't gonna lie, man. This you quiet over there. Over there. <laughs> yeah, especially like how um uh, how, how how Mr. E he was just saying, man. Think about what you like, what you passionate about. Mm -hmm. Think about that, and like yeah. think about where you trying to go. Mm -hmm. and even like with the whole transition thing, like. The, the three steps of transition, I had to write that down because I don't, I don't know what I didn't know where to begin to start to be a man. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So, and just learning about like the birth, where the passage, the rites of passage that, that the other one man got to go through. But it's also it was also something that stuck out to me, like when you said, um, a rite of passage in the black community was going to jail, mm -hmm. and. One thing I had to think about, like, I was thinking about that, like, I, they used to always bother me like, when I was young. I was like, am, am I a real man because I ain't been to jail yet? Because I ain't never went to jail. Mm. So, like, am I a real man because I ain't been to jail yet? Am I a real man yet because I, I haven't been to jail? Like, is that not make me a man? And so, it's like a lot of things I learned learning now because I got a friend. He just got eight years in prison, wow. in state prison. Wow. But it behind it behind the female, like he, he in the chain game behind the female. That's right. That's and right. That's right. I was just it, it made me look it made me look at his situation so and like just notice like man, I'm I'm really I'm really doing better than I think I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And he it's like he missing that time from maturity. He got like three kids with the girl, he missing that time from them. It's gonna be eight years going off your children life, but you ain't gonna be there for them. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I feel like God preparing me to be a good husband and be a good father when the time comes for me to be a husband. And learning this from now, like it's teaching me so that I won't have to go through the same thing that someone else mm -hmm. So that I could be like a better man. So Amen, it just it's it is it, it's helping me like it's it's helping me like it helped me a lot because just like I like I didn't have that father figure that to tell me something. My daddy was there, but he wasn't there like that. You know what I'm saying? Like he didn't teach me because he didn't have a father. Mm -hmm. So he just going on what he learned from being around his the males and his family. He was raised around right. pimps and stuff like that. So it's it's really it's showing me like another way to go. And plus, like, I had a conversation with the young lady I was talking to, and she was like, just because you was raised around a certain environment don't mean you got to act that certain type of way. Mm. You, could, you could be different from me. You could be better than me. And it just really just stood at me like, this is something I need because I don't know. I don't know what it is to be a man. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Like, the, the, I want to know what it is to be a man, but I want to know what it is to be a man of God, too. I, I asked God about that. I'm like, God, teach me how to be a real man of God. <laughs> teach me how to be somebody that's going to represent you well. And also be able to, you know, like I was saying, like, take care of my community. Take care of the people around me. Take care of my mother. Take care of my sisters and brothers and stuff like that. And just make sure that I'm being the best man that I can be. And being a man, not like everybody else. Not like the people I've seen be me. But be me in like, God, I mean, that's, that's a man of God because I, I don't know where to start, but I, I, I love the fact that I'm in the community 
with men around me who got more than me, who done been through long, who done been through life, you know, further than me to teach me how to be a man. So that so I can do the right thing. Amen. Wow. Amen. wow, bro. Thank you. Man, thank you for sharing that. Uh, wow. Thank I appreciate y'all for sharing. I appreciate y'all for sharing what y'all went through, man. You know, like I done been out there so drunk before and stuff, but by the grace of God, I ain't got caught. You know what I'm saying? So right. it's like learning how to like Joe you know and I met Officer Peterson, like he said he seen so many, but I couldn't see that in myself. I mm -hmm. couldn't see who I was. I I didn't know who I was, like I ain't know. I didn't know right. I didn't know who I was. Like, I, I already just lost. Like, I, I was lost. Like I always believed in God, but my identity as a man, I didn't know. Like, I don't. I, I didn't know who I was as a man, even still to the day. I still want to learn who I am and who I'm going to be as a man. Like I just, I want God to transition me to who I'm going to be. Yeah. So. Amen. Well, again, uh, thank you for sharing. Um, I tell you, I'm gonna be very transparent. That means a lot to me. Uh, even just for these two sessions, even if it's just these two sessions, that you feel that way because you, and prayerfully you'll learn and, and as we move on, you know, we'll be asking you as well, the others to 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 lead one of these sessions. Because uh, mm -hmm. in that, uh, you're going to have to draw upon your experiences. If, if you, because you have to do it in a way that you want to be impactful and effective. A man is a whole lot of things. There is no one definition of a man. Mindset. Because whether you believe you can or you believe you can't, you're right. When I'm praising, I'm not just screaming, I'm fighting. I'm winning the war in the ground of my mind. you're hiding is holding you back from your destiny. I want you to own it. I want you to own it.